Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I would like to tell you a story. It's a story that repeats very often. When in an environment, when there is no concept of flow, and work gets pushed onto teams, expectations become unrealistic. When the focus is on starting more work rather than finishing old work, results got delayed. Management feels the urgency to push even more work to make up for the delays. Employees work overtime trying to handle all the requests regardless of their lack of capacity. The pool of requests continue to increase despite of all their efforts. People get tired. The constant context switching leads to poor results. Work gets abandoned, engagement get, get broken. Fingers start pointing at each other. There is no trace of motivation or engagement at all anymore. People feel like their work doesn't bring any value. The working environment becomes toxic. There is no trust, respect, or appreciation. One after another, they start packing their boxes and they leave. Voluntary turnover is a problem that's costing the US economy $1 trillion, according to Gallup. It's $1 trillion US dollars. And the worst part is that this problem is self-inflicted by organizations. The fact is that management could have prevented their talent from walking away and avoided losing up to two times of annual salary in turnover costs. When people leave, they cause immense stress on your business. Your employees, together with all their knowledge of your company, are walking away through that door. And this is a cardinal sin of management, to see your rarest talent walk away when they're the easiest to engage and most expensive to replace. It is very important to retain your employees. I can't stress that enough. Doesn't it make more sense to grow your own performers, to keep the costs down, to avoid turnover, to retain the knowledge, and to focus on increasing productivity and efficiency. When your people are engaged, when they feel motivated, and when they have a purpose, they're going, they're going to be able to handle any objective you challenge them with and they will be feeling happy about this. This is, this is probably the most important message that I would like to send today. People are the most valuable element in any organization. There is a straightforward manner that you can manage engaged and motivated workforce. The Kanban method suggests an approach of managing the flow of work instead of workers. It's a system that works upon the efficiency and the speed of your process by reducing, um, by eliminating waste and relieving overburden. It focuses on workflow efficiency rather than individual efficiency. And there are some basic practices that, that boost employee engagement. Adopting a pool system is one of the easiest ways to boost employee engagement. It relieves overburden by allowing people to start their, their work on their own pace. It also increases productivity and efficiency of the system. There are essentially three main steps that you need to apply when you are um, you need to follow if you would like to implement a Kanban pool system. You need to visualize your workflow, you need to implement a pool system, and you need to limit your work in progress. 
Map your value stream on a Kanban board. Each column corresponds to a process state. Each card is a piece of work. As work is flowing to the process, cards move across the board. This provides great visibility into your employees on how much do they have on their plate. It also improves a lot the collaboration within the team. Instead of pushing work into the process, leave your employees to pull work only when they are, there is a demand for it and they have the capacity to handle that demand. Pool systems, in, in pool systems, the different process states are split into two parts, active state and acute state. Acute states are passive states. No work is happening there. It stays, stays in a queue to move forward. Once your team members have capacity to handle new work, they pull from those queue states. However, visualizing data and pulling work is not enough to help you achieve an efficient workflow and manage motivated workforce. If there is too much work in progress in the system, your process still can get stuck. Work in progress, too much work in progress leads to delays. It leads to overburden. It leads to poor quality in the results. And it leads to very, very low employee engagement. Once, when you have too much work in progress in your system, your team will be forced to constantly switch the context in order to handle all the work at once. This is not effective and it comes with its cost. It's estimated that context switching calls at least 10% penalty per switch. In order to prevent that effect, you need to control the amount of work that goes in and out of the system. Implementing work in progress limits helps your team complete work faster. The point is to get more done rather than doing more. Implementing a Kanban pool system is going to create some idle time for your team members. However, managers are often obsessed in optimizing individual idle time, but it is needed in order to achieve an optimal delivery speed. Idle time is not a bad thing. It actually offers quite a lot of advantages. Aside from reducing much of the stress, your team will be able to provide results with precision and quality. They will use idle time to improve their skills, to look for new tools. They will use it to improve. This will make them more self-motivated and then they will be dedicated to your business. It will boost the employee engagement and it will work for your business. Creating an environment of improvement is critical to business agility. Companies that empower self-employment initiatives are much more successful than those who try to utilize every minute. Once you have your Kanban pool system in place, you will be able to start tracking some basic flow metrics like work in progress, throughput, and cycle times. It is important to be able to measure the efficiency of your workflow. Your queue states pay very important, play a very important role here. The cumulative flow diagram is a very handy analytics tool that represents the amounts of work in progress in each process state as, as color bands. The states that correspond, the bands that correspond to the queue states ideally should remain very thin or they should disappear. If they start expanding, this means that you, you have uh, work that is sitting idle and most probably your team is struggling with the demand. Every process has an arrival and departure lines. These are the top and the bottom lines in your process. 
If you maintain a stable and efficient system, then those two lines are going to be parallel as your work in progress is going to stay with a cons in a consistent amount. This approach is going to boost your employees' engagement as they will become more predictable. Teams in Kanban make their commitments using probabilistic estimations. They make their decisions based on data, using data-driven approach based on their past performance. This is a cycle time histogram that is showing the overall distribution of the completion times. This graph is helping teams to set up certain goals and the probability of achieving those goals. This is a team commitment. This is not an individual commitment. The challenge manifests itself when teams need to coordinate all the work in progress currently in the system and handle all the bottlenecks in order to achieve that common goal. Team commitment is not a contract. You shouldn't punish your teams if they can't meet it. If that happens, the best you can do is to look back, see what the reasons behind the delays are, and take the actions upon it. The Kanban method provides all the means to measure continuous improvement efforts. As systems improve and cycle time degrees, this is a huge boost for your employees. Team commitments will become much more relevant and they will be willing to achieve even more. Your employees need a clear guidance on what brings value to your business. They need to know how their work contributes to the business success. Clear objectives drive employee engagement. In, Kanban, in, in the Kanban backlog, user stories represent customer value and define clear objectives. Each user story is classified with a class of service at the moment that it is created. Classes of service have two main purposes, to classify the work based on its priority and to define how the items in the different classes of service should be treated. The process of definition of classes of service strongly depends on your context. It could be based on cost of delay, um, technical risks, complexity, market value, or even a combination between each of them. It also needs to be based on the feedback of your customers, teams, and stakeholders. Once you have your classes of service defined, the adoption of a sequencing policies is going to define how they interact with each other. Having that system in place is going to help your teams decide on their own what is the next tasks that they have to work on. The reasons behind the decisions that are made become explicit and the system becomes much more consistent. Poor communication is at the root of employee disengagement. Depleted productivity, um, high turnover, low morale, most of them are pretty much caused by bad communication. Your people face problems. They're facing them every day. Eventually, they have their ideas and their experiments that they would like to apply in order to solve those problems. But if they don't have the chance to speak up, then the circle of disengagement continues. It is very important for you to actually take the initiative instead of waiting for them to make the first move. Kanban suggests um, seven essential cadences that fosters communications between all parties. The purposes behind those cadences can be split into, two, into, into three main groups. Getting things done, doing the right things, and doing things better. 
invite everyone that is interested to participate and contribute to those meetings. People need to know that their opinion matter. Take action upon it right away. That's the best way that you can boost their engagement and to make them feel like, and, and to, to make them understand that their feedback really matters. Effectively, you are building an environment and a culture where your, your teams and your employees uh, have the power to shape the decision-making process of your company. Today's talent want to have the freedom to innovate, to participate, and to collaborate. They would like to have the power to exercise leadership skills. The World Bull Research found that measured a seven times revenue growth in those companies that promoted freedom-centered leadership rather than going with the do-as-you-are-told approach. Employee engagement is not just a buzzword that the modern businesses use. This is the bedrock of business agility. We've seen how the Kanban method empowers the employee engagement through its core practices. People show up and get involved not because they're paid to do so, but because they want to, because they're invested in what they do, because they care. They don't achieve, they achieve better results not because they have to, but because they're willing to. So where do we begin? First, see your employees as the most important asset of your business. Remember that the needs of your employees are as important as the needs of your customers. Give them the voice to speak up. Let them get their ideas into the table. Give them the power to change your decision-making process. Give them the freedom to start work on their own pace and make the best of their time. You're going to build a culture of engagement where leadership is shared and potential is unleashed. Thank you.